Hello, everybody. I'm Lois Smith with the lovely assignment to interview Dolly de Leon from the Triangle of Sadness. I, if you have seen the film, you'll know what I'm talking about. And if you haven't, well, I can't imagine exactly what your responses will be because there are many. But one thing I was so aware of is surprises and the final and best one is Dolly Leone's performance in the last part of the film. I had the good fortune of meeting and talking with Dolly uh, at the time she was in New York City for the New York Film Festival. And I'm really glad to get to talk with her a little bit more today. Dolly, congratulations. You just received the LA Film Critics Award and a nomination for Golden Globes. That's lovely. I'm so oh happy. Yes, it is. Thank you, Lois. Thank you. And I'm so happy that you're here to interview me today. It's such an honor. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to have real. more conversation with you. I'm glad yeah, for that. Me too. Me huh? too. Me too. And this is the perfect opportunity for us to have that. Yes. It's been a really surreal day. It's, I it's can, weird. I can partly imagine, yes. And now you're back at home in Manila, is that right? I am. I'm home, yes. Yes, for a while at least. I've been um, here for, um, I think, three weeks already since I last saw you. So, yes, yes. yeah, I totally. celebrate Christmas here and, yeah. Great. great. <laughs> I was very aware when we were talking of of a of a very uh joint feeling about what we do as actors i was so impressed with your story of life in manila which i heard too little about uh but i had a sense that my very long uh, time which has been in new york city and yours in manila th th there were many similarities you spoke about for one thing, I know that you worked in the theater a lot, which so did so have I, and which I treasure. And that now you are suddenly an international uh, presence in the films. Uh, I hate to say what's that been like because I think it's been exhausting for one thing, but has there been more pleasure than grief? <laughs> I'm, ha I'm I'm so uh, happy how you know you really understand what I'm going through yes there has been more pleasure than grief actually yeah it's been exhausting it's been tiring it's you know um so many things happening all at the same time and I would hardly have any time to breathe but it's really been more of a you said it perfectly more of a pleasure than anything else because primarily I get to meet people like you you know mm -hmm. like-minded people who share the same passion as I and that matters a lot to me um, and to meet other you know creators and um, uh, artists and cinephiles people who love film people who love the theater and that's been the more most glorious thing about this experience is meeting people who are passionate about about this world that this crazy world that we live in so yeah it's been really more of a pleasure than it's been you know uh, I suppose painful or tiring exhausting yes yeah. yes yes well of course it is because it is part of is part part of what this art and craft are about, which is being available and uh, uh, and reaching the people that we make it for. I've been so aware with the with the pandemic, the how what we do it entirely involves gathering together and making it together, which of course has been interfered with by by the pandemic. I mean, I, there are many other w ways of, of uh, 
life that have been similarly interfered with. But for us, we can only do it together. We can only do it by gathering. We gather in order to make it and then present it. And then the people for whom it's done must gather also. In the theater, that is certainly essential. They must gather to come to the theater. In the film, it's becoming less so, but still ideally, I think our audience gathers to uh, to come and receive it. <laughs> yeah, it's a very communal experience. It's it's nothing, you know, it, there's nothing compared to sharing, you know, a, an, an artistic experience inside a room with an audience. So, yeah, it's, it's communal. It can't be something that you can live in a, a silo. So, yes. yeah, and I'm, I'm glad it's coming back to life. I was thinking of your beautiful performance in Triangle of Sadness. I think about it and think about you as a stage actress because it is the kind of role which has such a completion in itself and such development. Uh, I wonder if that felt to you like, like your stage experience was, was informing. It that really that. was. Yeah, it, it really, really was. It was very informing. Um, primarily because of Ruben's style of filming. He likes to do several takes which is very similar to the theater experience where we do rehearsals over and over again, especially here in the Philippines where I come from, we would have rehearsals from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. On, on weekends. We would run the play for like three times throughout the entire day and have breaks in between. And, and that's what it was like with Ruben. We would do it over and over again. And my theater experience really helped me a lot in being able to navigate that kind of style of filming. I mean, I, I, I would have been, I would have probably been so exhausted and so spent and probably would have hated it so much if, if not for my theater background, but I appreciated his style a lot because that's how we, we do it. You know, um, it's by repetition that we find things, you know, we use that term, we need to find it. And I was able to find, and all of us were able to find our characters through this exploration of repetitiveness and and doing everything, you know, um, and collaborating with him and talking to him about the, the text, talking with to him about the material. And and my my experience as a theater actor really informed my performance here in a lot of ways. Yeah. Uh, you, you you make my heart sing with those words because I think about all of that a lot. I think about how wonderful it is when it's present and how there is no substitute for it when it's missing in terms of yes. developing a role. You spoke a bit when we first met about um, uh, working with, with Ruben Osland, which must have been such a delight. Uh, do you feel like talking about how you first came to meet him and and to uh, sure audition, if it was an audition or a meeting or how it came about? The first time I met him was in a meeting in Skype, and I thought, well, I was told that it's, it was going to be just a meeting, but I knew deep deep inside that it was like an audition. I, I felt like I was going or like a job interview. So that's when I first met him. It, that was in 2019. That was about a month after I auditioned for the part of Abigail. And we had a Skype meeting. And um, I, you know, that was the time when Zoom wasn't, well, maybe it existed, but I didn't know anything about it yet. And, and I had to set up, you know, my place to, and, and put all my lamps wherever I could put them so that I can have good lighting and um, I just had a, my tablet and and you know I just had that first meeting with him um, in Skype but my first ever face-to-face -face meeting with him was on set on Ooh. set on my first day of yeah. filming 
in Sweden and I didn't even meet him prior to that because they had they were already filming for like two or three days and when I arrived you know it was the pandemic so they were avoiding um, face-to-face meetings as much as possible so when I met him we were on set so I first met Harris Dickinson and Shelby Dean God bless her soul um, on the on the day itself when we were filming and when we got to set I'll never forget the first things he said, then he said, finally, my triangle of sadness is complete. Uh-huh. And that's wh- where I first met him on set. Nice, nice beginning. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you spoke to us about that. I was interested in, in his um, interest in actors that... Uh, brings them together in order to work in the way you've described. Tell me, uh, we talked a little bit about working uh, all these long years of working as an actor. Do you think you've done more theater than film in Manila? I believe that by this time, they've evened out. Yes. But prior to this, I would say that I, I, I did more theater than than film. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, definitely by far. Yeah. Um if you combine film and television, for, yeah. they they'd probably even out, but film per se, no, yeah. More more theater than, than film, definitely. Okay. Yeah. And have you mostly worked at home in Manila or have you traveled a lot in stage or film? Work. No, I've never traveled at all. This is my first, the first film I've ever, any job I've ever worked on outside of my country. Ah. Trian- yeah, Triangle of Sad, this is my first ever foray into working overseas. The international. So, yeah. Right, so everything has been here at home. And at home in Manila, do you feel as though your audience is uh, strongly a, a- uh, addicted to theater? Do you? Uh, is there a, a big theater going public in Manila? Unfortunately, not. No, no, um, no. That it's a very sad fact. No, there are not a lot of uh, theater goers here in the Philippines. Uh, most uh, uh, most of the people here love to watch television. Actually, even more than cinema. Um, and I I think it's because theater, um, according to you know the economic I mean economically theater costs a little bit more than television. You need to pay for a ticket to watch you know per person. So if there are five of you in the family, then you have to buy five tickets. So it's yeah. more costly, and yeah. and it's it's not very cost efficient. So with but with television, you can go to a friend's house and share the television with two or three different families. Yes. So no, it's 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 not uh, especially musical theater. And musical theater is very expensive here. It's it's it, mostly the uh, only the upper classes can you know afford to buy tickets to musical theater. So no, it's it's no people don't really go to the theater as much here in in the Philippines, which is yes, really it sad. Is, it is unfortunately a small niche. Um, yes. Art, which you know, uh, I I am always thinking about ways for it to continue. It seems to me essential, essential in the theater arts and the definitely pictures and the television is part of the theater art. And in order to have it as good as you make it, it requires the kind of work that actors learn. Definitely. And this is where it all started. I mean, film started from theater. I yes. mean, the, there there weren't any pictures before. People would do stage plays. They would, and, you know, men would play the women's yes. parts. I mean, we know that about Shakespeare, right? So um, so that's the beginnings of, of entertainment, really, is theater. Um, and cinema is a child of theater. So it's it's... It's really quite unfortunate that people don't really see that and don't see the value in that. And, you know, coming together in a big room and watching obser- and, and witnessing something with a large group that's live and interacting with the actor, 
is a different experience compared to watching something that's pre-recorded. Yes. It's a indeed. totally different thing. Here we are talking about live theater. theater. <laughs> it means a lot <laughs> if to both of us. So I think it's okay. We're it spending so much time on it. I hope so. <laughs> and I think you have children, yes, which we didn't talk about when we met in, in New York. I do. I do. I have four children. Three of them are adults and I have, my youngest is 10. Uh-huh. I have three grandchildren and they are all in their 20s. I have just one child, my daughter, who has three. Uh, so you have a 10-year-old. Yes. 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 And did he travel? He or she? She. She. Yeah. Yeah. Did she travel she, with you in any of this uh, traveling with the, with the triangle of sadness? No, no, she could not because she goes to school and I didn't want. It was her first face to face since the pandemic. So uh -huh. I wanted her to experience that because she's been going through online classes for two straight years. And Terrible. it's not a fun thing for a child to sit in front of a computer the whole day, you know, and watch all her classmates and her teacher talk so i wanted her to enjoy the face to face experience so no she didn't she didn't come with me but but that's 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 okay yeah yes that's okay yeah do your children all live in uh, in in the philippines near you yes they all they all uh they all actually live with me except for my son my son lives with his father because his school is closer to his father's home Yes. But yeah, he's he also comes here on weekends with me and stays with me on the weekends. Oh, great, great! Yeah, I'm glad to know something about your life there because I don't know anything about Manila and the Philippines except what I read in the newspapers. But I've never had any exposure to a theater life there, so thank you for letting me know a bit about it. Have any of your children uh, gone into this profession you know my eldest um took theater arts actually when she graduated from high school but then she decided to to leave it and, and move to another uh area of interest um and it's really sad because she she <laughs> the reason why she didn't want to do that is because she didn't want to live under my shadow um, at least that's the reason she gave me because um, in the school that she went to, um, I, I I also came from that same school, that, that same university. And um, I had, well, you know, I, I'm one of the alumni of that school. So they were all like, oh, so you're Dolly's daughter, you're Dolly's daughter. And she didn't, she didn't like that. So she, she left it. But none of my children are artists. My second is a banker. Um, and I believe my third wants to be a visual artist and the youngest wants to be a graphics artist. So, yeah, none of them are actors like us. <laughs> and that's good because acting is, a, you know, it's a tough job. It's really tough. It is tough. It is tough to combine raising a family with being an actor, which you've exactly. had plenty of because experience. It, it's a lot of traveling. Yes, it's true. Yeah. It's true in this country as well. It's it's a challenge. Yes. yes. Tell me, you've had other awards, I think, in your in your uh, th theater and or film in the Philippines. Yes. Tell yes. me about those because I um, um well um in theater um I've 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 uh I've the only award I got was an ensemble, an ensemble award, best ensemble for um, Tribes by Nina Rain, a straight play. And uh, the other one is for a film, Verdict, where I won a Best Supporting Actress Award in 2020. So yeah, th those are the two awards I got. Um, I'm, I'm actually... Um, I'm actually an underrated actress in my country. I don't really get awards here, uh, and I don't really get nominated. I think that the the famous was was uh, really a pleasant surprise for me, uh, uh -huh. a really beautiful gift that 2020 gave me because you know 2020 wasn't an easy year, but right. I I got that and it was really something special, something I didn't expect to receive. Excellent. 
I'm so happy that you are in the triangle of sadness. I am very happy about the whole film. It was, as I think I said at the beginning, for me, a series of surprises. And I do love that when it happens when I'm watching. Um, when, when you were making it, was there, I've always, I always feel as though the, the ingredients that make a working experience most valuable are, of course, the material and the people, um, what, be it stage, film, or television. And in this one, watching, I would say you had a, you had a high, a very high standard in all of those. Is that how it felt working on that lovely film? Yes, that's exactly how it felt. Um, well, from our director, Ruben Ostlin, to down to the, the actors, the crew, the staff, everyone, everyone had such high standards. Um, it was a collaboration. Everyone had something to contribute and no one was just sitting, you know, in the sidelines waiting for orders or waiting for instructions. Everyone was taking a step forward and taking the initiative to contribute and, you know, um, really create this film with and to contribute something that would, you know, um, that would turn out to be what you watched. And everyone, uh, every single person was valuable in that set, on that set, everyone had, had a very precious role to fill in all of that. And, and the cast also, all of us were like-minded in terms of um, wanting to really um, put in the best that we can do. And not just the best, but also explore um, what other avenues we can put into the film and um, give Ruben our own insight on how we can make the material work better and he was very open to discussions and he was very um, receptive to our input and to our to our own you know our own thoughts on how we should go about to you know tweak the the characters that we were playing it was really uh, a one of a kind experience for me it, it was very special and it, it's it you know I would say it was probably you know an ideal setup as far as I'm concerned it was really magical everything was just the people were warm everyone was great everyone was caring and considerate of each other everyone was kind and um, you're right um, you know um, the key to a really um, successful um production is the material and the people and we had all the right people and i think that that's probably ruben's um strength as a director he can more or less sense if a person is easy or or, or pleasant to work with and i think that was one of his bases also for for putting together the cast and the crew and he al always works with the same set of people in terms of his crew he has the same director of photography, the same production designer, same costume designer, same wardrobe. Everyone is always the same. They're like a well-oiled machine. So whenever a new set of actors come, come in, we're, we're all newcomers, you know, so to speak, but because they're also, they're well gelled and they're, they're, they're so, you know, cohesive that when we come in, it's like they welcome us with open arms and it's a beautiful experience. It's one of a kind, really. It's wonderful. How wonderful. I'm so happy to hear you tell us about it. Is there any, we're going to run out of time in a few minutes. Is there any one thing you'd like to tell anybody about this, this experience, this film? Um, well, you know, I, I think that um, maybe um, if you watch the film, you know, it's funny. It's a satire and people tend to take it lightly. And we do. I mean, even I do when we watch it. But I, I think it all boils down to really, um, you know, um, 
treating people with kindness and i think that that's what the the backbone of the film is and and the reason why i'm talking about this is because you asked me about how well we work with the whole team and and i think that's what everyone sees you know when they watch the film it's really a meeting of the minds it's people working together cohesively and looking out for each other and caring for each other and and you know i hope that people pick that up and that they they pick up i don't know they they take away some kind of you know something that they can you know apply to their own lives and maybe reflect on their own lives and see that oh maybe if um i add a little extra amount of kindness with a particular person i work with or someone i meet then maybe it would make a difference in their lives and that's what happened to me because when i was filming i went there very insecure i went there you know um like i said i've never worked out of the country before so i was, I was very intimidated so when i got, got there i was terrified but you know i was welcomed with welcome with open arms and you know that says a lot about the kind of people in this production and it also shows in the film and i hope that you know um it translates into the minds of the people that of the audience that you know it it takes you know it kindness really um it goes a long way kindness goes a long way and that you know um we we make a difference in people's lives when we when we share our kindness and our warmth to each other and yeah it's funny the film's funny but maybe if we can you know look at it in a more serious way and think of okay maybe if um i add a little humanity in how i deal with everyone i meet then it would make a difference in their lives humanity which you finally said has been the word that's been in my brain all the time you talked because that's what happens to me when i see your film when i see the kind of when it's really the real thing that's what happens whether it's sad grim joyous it touches on our humanity and that's what it brings to us and in, increases in each of us thank you dolly for for everything you've said for your beautiful performance thank you lois thank may you so next, much may the next ones be equally wonderful thank you thank you thank you